is my Christmas tree and it is the biggest Christmas tree I think I've ever had. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut quite a bit off the bottom, probably not the height actually, I'm probably managed, but some of the width and then I'll use the cuttings in something else. But um, I'm really lucky because my neighbour got it for me and it was very inexpensive. I don't know whether he grows them, I didn't actually ask him where he gets them from. Um, but anyway, I was very pleased with it. So, and it was, he just left it in the front yard. So what could be easier? And I think he's chosen me a very nice one. It's a bit sparse at the top, but I don't mind that. I quite like that. It's quite uh, like a tree might be in the forest. I don't feel I've got to have the most perfectly shaped tree because life isn't really like that, is it? I mean, we're, we're all our own shapes and sizes. And actually, I think once it's standing up, it's going to be really nice. I don't think the sparseness at the top is going to matter at all. In fact, I think you'll see the decorations on it better. <laughs> needing my thermal leggings on today. Um, I've just done something I've never done before and I'm not, I don't think I've ever looked at the garden from this perspective. I've just had my very nice coffee and mince pie and I've, what I was doing was sitting on the devil's stone because it was the only place in the front garden with a little bit of sun filtering through and it's a very sunny day. So because I'm sitting in a sort of triangle here with the Sprite child, who's the garden guardian, and the frog, it feels as if I'm actually having my coffee with them and it's a bit more of a conversation than normal, which I rather like. I don't know what it means sitting on the devil's stone, I must say. I'm not quite sure what effect it will have. <laughs> but the main effect I can report at the moment is rather a cold backside. <laughs> so I think I'm going to get up and get moving again. It's the middle of the day now and I'm out in the garden and I thought you might like to see a really good example of the difference between the north and the south sides of a garden um, really really well illustrated and why it's important to choose the right things I suppose at the right in the right places because this is the north of the garden where the trellis is here and the beds, the vegetable beds, are completely frozen and uh, this is lunch, this is one o'clock I think roughly and that ground is like earth as hard as iron you know water like a stone and all that it's completely frozen the crunch um and yet on the other side of the garden it's actually warm against your legs it's really it's really quite strange so we'll walk round to the other side looking at all this lovely frosty foliage frosty nettles um, you can see all the things I'll need to be taking out that are finished as well, but today isn't the day for that. So I'm crunching on the cardboard under my feet there that I laid down. You can um, also see that the trees are now really very bare. Uh, the colours, oh, I'm crunching on the nettles again. At least they can't really sting you when you're, well, I, I tell myself they can't really sting you while, uh, while they're frozen like this. Maybe they can, but I'm not going to put it to the test. Even in the garden, I've got these few little leaves, which are so pretty, but not many. I think even from the last video, I think you'll be able to see the difference now. And I'm quite pleased to see that this wayfaring tree is, uh, it is more or less evergreen, which I'm very pleased about because there's one in, I think I might've mentioned this before, but there's one in the front garden right by the trellis. So it'll, it'll be quite good for a bit of screening if it keeps its leaves. I can see a little oak tree, which young oaks don't lose their leaves often. I mean, often that's not probably not a rule of that's probably not a hard and fast rule, but I've noticed they tend to keep their leaves small when they're young. And I can see an oak sapling there, which was not planted, and I'm afraid we'll have to 
be moved although I'll hopefully be able to find a good home for it but I can't really have an oak just there there just isn't space <laughs> uh, with the best will in the world lovely hazel the hazels are really late losing their leaves it's something you only discover these things you know when you start at, I suppose you do discover them when you go for walks but it, it brings it home all the more when you've got a little a little forest <laughs> of your own or a custodian of it at least now on this side although there is some frost on the grass just there I suppose grass is a bit of a grand word <laughs> for it but you know um a lot of it's really really well it's warm I mean this is where I'm touching this is a, it's uh, it's actually the sunlight's actually warm on my fingers so it's uh, the sun's at its height which is not very high uh, but it, everything here is so it just feels very very different and this is the south side and this is why i've got the a uh, lot of things that like good uh, warm conditions and shelter like a lot of these are fruit trees I don't really know why I'm showing you. It's not really looking at that uh, exciting at the moment. But you know, I'm um, just give it's just the idea really. There's this is a Victoria plum tree, and this one is an apple tree. Can't remember which one. This one is another apple tree, and that is a um, there's a little bit of a apple there. Uh, that is Discovery, I think, or is is it Discovery? It's a very early one anyway. This one's an apricot and they really do need sheltered conditions. So I have quite good hopes, you know, it's a, it couldn't be much more sheltered than against this wall here, really. And you can see how the sun is on it, even on a day like this. And this one's a cherry, though. Uh, sweet cherries also like lots of shelter and warmth. So hopefully that's quite new. I bought that in sale last, oh, I don't know, <laughs> a few months ago now. Anyway, it hasn't had a chance yet to show whether it's even alive or not, but I, hopefully it is can't quite judge yet we'll we'll obviously find out in in two or three months time which ones are, are happy and which ones are less so i can see new buds on this tree anyway this is the victoria plum uh, so i'll just uh, see if i can show you that's a little bud there it looks live and here and we've looked at these before, but again, not for a while, not since all the leaves have been off, I think. This is one of my alder trees, and you can see how it's got its lovely catkins on already, and it's also got cones on. Let's see if I can find some cones to show you, because that's one of the features of alders. They do have all everything on at the same time, so they do have leaves and catkins and cones all coexisting, although there aren't any leaves here now because it's uh, too late for them. And actually, I can't see cones. That must mean they've fallen off, because there they were, they were some. Now I'm back in the shady part, and it's it's crunching underfoot again. And it just is so different. It just is so much colder. So these are really good lessons to note walking around a garden at different times of year. They always say that, but you really do feel that when you uh, on a day like today, when you've got these huge contrasts. In his poem, A Nocturnal Upon St Lucy's Day, the poet John Donne used the imagery of the winter solstice before the Gregorian calendar because he lived between 1572 and 1631, when St Lucy's Day was actually the shortest and thus the darkest day of the year. So it, for him it was a symbol of mourning someone beloved. And it's a beautiful poem, but I wanted just to read to you the last few lines, which I thought were quite appropriate for today. You lovers, for whose sake the lesser sun at this time to the goat is run, to fetch new lust and give it you, enjoy your summer all since she enjoys her long night's festival let me prepare towards her and let me call this hour her vigil and her eve since this both the years and the days deep midnight is This little kit has been so lovely and so worth it. I heard about it and I just looked into it and I thought I would invest in it this year and I'm so pleased that I did. I haven't got very far yet. I didn't start on the 1st of December because I hadn't even heard about it then. And even after I sent for it, it did take quite a while to get here. So, but I worked out that by starting when I got it, which was I think the 15th of December, 
and by doing the little project every day I would finish on old Christmas Day. So that was just coincidental, but I'm really pleased about that. That sounds just up my street, really. So what it is, is it's a piece of felt, as you can see, and there's a little project every day, and in the end, it makes up a whole scene. So the first day, I did the um, snowy mountains and the line there. And then the second day, it was the trees. They were a bit fiddly because you can see all that stitching on them. Um, and, the th and then um, what was the next thing I did? Oh, this log down at the bottom with again some stitching on it. And then these little houses, which is what I'm doing today. I am behind now because, well, I'm behind. <laughs> but, um, but I've cut them all out. I mean, even just cutting them out is quite fiddly, to be honest. But anyway, I shall stitch them down and then I'll come back later. I've got to finish this today and try and start the next day uh, later on today. So I'll show you it when I've got that all stitched down. And, you know, now and again, as I keep going, and if, if I make another video, I'll show you where I'm up to. But it doesn't really matter being behind, I've decided, because I'm just going to, if I have a day when I've got more time, I can just perhaps do two days worth. And in the end, as I say, it's like 24 days worth of um, little mini projects with all the templates and all the bits and pieces. And you've got these pieces of felt and you've got the embroidery threads. Um, and very, very clear instructions. So normally, I mean, in the old days, this is a good lesson to me. It even came with a needle. Not that I haven't, not that I haven't got needles myself, but it was just really nice. That every single thing you need is in it. And um, part of me in the old days, I'd have said, well, you know, I can make up my own things. I would be a bit sniffy, if that's the right word, about doing somebody else's project because I like to be completely original. And when I used to make quilts, patchwork, wall hangings, I used to design my own and hand dye the fabrics and all that kind of thing. But actually, especially at this time of year, when you're kind of thinking about other things as well, to have something which is so directed as to say, cut this tree in this colour and that tree in that colour and um, this embroidery thread and everything, is actually really nice. I'm really enjoying being directed. So that's quite a good lesson as well. That everything has its place. And when I see things, I mean, I don't knit particularly. Um, but when I see people following knitting patterns, I think, well, it's just going to look like everybody else's who's made that same pattern with that same wool. But quite often, that's just not really the point, is it? Because we just need a project where we, we can meditate almost at the same time. And that's what I found while I've been stitching. Your mind can wander onto other things, which is really, I really enjoy. So anyway, I thought I'd show you where I'm up to. And then, as I said, we'll come back to it. And even, even just these little houses stitched down, I think once they're stitched down, they'll look a bit more, um, they'll be kind of integrated into the scene more. And we'll see how we get on. And it should finish an old Christmas day, which is the 7th of January. Uh, and if it doesn't, if I haven't got it finished then, then I'll do it for old epiphany. So it's all good. There's always a festival date that you can use as a marker. It's evening now. And uh, here is the little bit of the scene finished. I'm really pleased with it. I think it makes all the difference once you get the stitches in and it kind of seems to integrate all into the into the backgrounds and everything. It did take me quite a lot longer uh, doing it here and there and now and again during the day than I think it says in the book it should take each little part should take you 30 to 60 minutes. Well, I think I'm just quite a slow stitcher because well, the stitching might have done, but having to actually cut all the little pieces out, fiddly, fiddly little pieces out from the template and find the right colours of felt and then the right colours of thread and everything, it's quite slow. But it's a really, really enjoyable process. I think what I didn't say earlier was that you ha they have this elastic band provided and it goes over all the other day, all the other pages here, so that you only open um, each day as you come to it. It says no peeking. And so the whole thing is a surprise. And actually, that's part of the element of it, which I don't think I even said. But it's kind of crucial to the whole concept because it, like an advent calendar where you open the doors and you don't know what's going to be behind them. It's like that because I don't know what's under day five at all. But I'm going to open it now because I'm behind. So this is really today's, if not yesterday's. So I'll have a look and we can have a look together. And the answer is it's going to be these pine trees or this one big pine tree and one part of a pine tree. I don't know if you can see it just in the fold there and you get the templates. So that looks a little bit easier. So I'm quite pleased about that because I hopefully can catch up a little bit. 
and um, then yes I'll be back on track maybe but I've also come to the thought that even if I don't catch up and it's a bit longer it doesn't really matter rather than getting stressed over it and saying oh I'm behind I'm behind I think just enjoying each little part of the project and if it is old epiphany or any other um, time when it's finished then that's fine I think it will actually in reality be a bit after old Christmas day which is the 7th which of January which it would be if I got if I was going to get one one element done every single day um, and old epiphany which is the 17th no the 19th of January so that's a long enough scale project that every now and again we'll come back and I'll show you what I'm doing and how it's going as well as forgetting to tell you about, I don't think I told you about the no peaking and the elastic band. I don't think I also told you what make it is or anything. Um, but I'll, I'll write that down in the description underneath in case you're interested to do it next year. Because I think she does one every year or has done for the last about four years and I think the old ones are all still available each year but I thought as you can see the pictures of the old ones and I thought well if I get the current one then it's a complete surprise literally a complete surprise so really pleased I did Lovely to see the wooden bunting I have up here just moving really gently in the warm air currents from the stove. It's very calming. I do really love, I really love this bunting. I've had it for quite a few years. We, we had it at our old home. So it has very happy memories attached to it as well as being a little bit sad because of course those days are gone and will never come back again. Um, but it also I think it really suits this cottage sitting room and the message is quite clear so I think it's a nice image to end on I will make another solstice video this one's been quite um, a hodgepodge of different bits and pieces just showing you how things have been really for the past week or so here with the ice and then we've had the thaw now and the time is moving towards Christmas so there's that feeling in the air that Christmas is coming. So I hope you'll join me again next time. I'll, I'll make another video and it will be more all in one piece I think next time. Um, I hope, you'll, hope you've enjoyed this one anyway uh, and we'll forgive all the bits and pieces that I've strung together and I wish you a very cosy evening.